Hi, Maxine. We're going to take a look at your postings here. Let's go ahead and call them up here, share screen. All right. So we're going to take a look at both the aesthetics and control um, and the other, which was the uh, sunlight uh, piece. I'm just kind of taking a look first at just uh, the overall, what we've posted here to see uh, how you've arranged things and so on. Um, you know, believe it or not, again, I, I think I've talked about this a little bit in the last one that, um, you know, these these structures, these experiments, um, to work through them in the way that we're laying them out, um, they're they're meant to, to, to sort of create an atmosphere or an, uh, to create a... Um, uh, an opportunity to explore very specific things, either, um, you know, combinations of, of elements or um, the reaction of one thing next to another and, and those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not uh, arbitrary that we put these things together. So I'm glad that you're, um, you're going through them in, in, in the order in, that we're uh, laying them out and that you're, um, kind of gathering the information um, as we do, because um, even though it, it can slow you down a little bit to, to do that, it's um, it's really the reason that we're doing it um, has to do with what we're what we want you to uh, to to take away from it. So it looks like you have everything in there. Um, yeah, so um, to hold um, really, I mean, clearly to, to just show you the. Uh, shutter speed control, that's just one thing. And that takes, you know, no time at all to introduce you to uh, you know, shutter speeds and how those work and um, faster or slower, so on and so forth. Even talking about the concept of movement, um, you know, capturing movement, exaggerating movement. But until you really start attempting to fold it into compositions, uh, a thousandth of a second is just an ar arbitrary thing, or a half a second, or a one second, or two seconds, or whatever it happens to be. Um, it doesn't mean anything until those start to uh, be associated with uh, with 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 uh, a, 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 an image or a concept. Just like a word, if you hear a word in some foreign language and you don't know the meaning of that word. Sure, you can hear the syllables and you can understand that it's a word that, that has meaning, but there's no context to it. So you can understand a half a second when we say shutter speed's a half a second, but what does that really mean unless you know the context of what that looks like? So that's why we're doing the, the shutter speed um, experiment. And then having you kind of play around with things that are moving, um, again, is is the whole idea. So uh, I'm glad that you've maintained the um, the sort of uh, visual aesthetic that you've been carrying through the entire time, where you're right up in and, and close up. I mean, part of that has to do with the um, the material you're using, and that you're not kind of shying away from the idea of things having um, a sense of 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 sort of disappearing kind of thing. Um, you're using very effectively the, the tones behind the uh, the uh, uh, structures here, which may very well be be created by the the action of the 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 objects um, or the or the movement of the camera um, because really what's going on is as the light is reflecting off of the objects, the light is moving. And so the light that is here, and then it moves here, and then it moves here, and then it moves here over a period of time is basically a shade or a tone turns into that rather than detail. So it, it can um, literally be like a, a tonal background that you create that way. So um, yeah, and it, it dissolves completely into these abstractions where um, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, anything other than that. So at two seconds, you can see, you can clearly get to um, just a complete uh, abstraction going to shutter speed nine, going to a thousandth of a second um, and moving, you know, 
capturing uh, the sense of movement. You know, I think there are certain things that that work re really well, and um, other things that are sort of like, hey, what's going on with 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 these kinds of things? Um, and a lot of you know, we did the pine cones dropping. I think those work. But even what what works even better, I think, are sometimes these little little elements, these sort of after effects that happen, uh, the sort of the the result of the crash rather than the crash itself. Um, that kind of um, tends to, to to work a little bit more effectively, I think, um, when we're looking at these, is is the consequence rather than the actual um, effect itself. Yeah, I, you're you're relying on shape quite a bit here. Um, in other words, you're relying on the sort of outlined shape that happens here. Um, the tricky thing with with this kind of photography is that you don't actually you, you're not actually seeing what you're making a photograph of. Um, you're in a lot of ways um, having to anticipate what you're making, much like if you're doing a brush stroke uh, on a canvas. I mean, you can pre-visualize before you touch brush to to canvas what that mark is going to be, but only after you made the mark do you really know. And so. It's through experience that you can then decide that this is what I'm going to put down next. And it's through experience that you know that if I move the camera in this way or that way, if I adjust the shutter speed to one or another uh, setting, that I will get a, a particular um, um, stroke or a, a particular look that I'm that I'm going for. Um, you can start to anticipate that, but even then, what tends to happen is you start to then move away from that because once you start to predict something to happen, it, it kind of defeats the purpose because you can do it over and over again. You might want to, to start looking for other ways to, um, to explore. The wonderful thing about the digital um, experience with photography is that it's so instant, we can see immediately what we're working with. And the pre-visualization has to happen still because we, we need to make the image and then see what the uh, photographic effect is. But still, um, it happens so quickly, we can immediately witness this, um, like, wow, that's super cool. Um, you know, how is this, is this happening? Or seeing something like this and then making adjustments to the warmer side of it, say, well, I'm going to try that again, but this time I'm going to dial the white balance in so that it gives it more of a warmth so that it does feel more like it's a, a, a sort of a flame or burning kind of feel to it, or shifting it to the other way so it's it's more of that sort of blue ice kind of um, feel to it, depending on what you're uh, looking to create. So all of these things are the options that we want you to explore with the shutter speed, not just that you can do shutter speed control, but all of the consequences of the shutter speed control. The same thing with depth of field, which is a very straightforward exercise and experiment. It's not really supposed to give you like a profound like, wow, what? It's really more about giving you this almost like a, a map of what exactly does five, six to the, the, the most um, softest, most shallow depth of field I can, I can generate to the deepest one that I can generate. What are what are the, the 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 differences between the two? And again, being able to associate that number of sixteen or twenty two or five six or whatever with the the visual consequence of it. Then we're giving context, and it's no longer an abstract number. It's the the apertures are now visual experiences that we can know about, like color or tone or shape or any other thing. Um, and you've done it. I mean, it, there, there, there really isn't much more to, to, to kind of communicate about that. You, I mean, for, for any other, um, uh, any other part of it would be just to, to be able to identify what the range of your shutters are. Now you did go through, it looks like four, eight, six, three of uh, 10, 
20. These are in between. Um, you did go one, two, three, and so that's fine. You're 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 skipping three um, in there, but um, four eight would be a, a fraction of what those whole f stops would be. Um, starting at one, we would then kind of move into them. Um, sort of, we'll start at two. That, that's actually easier because you, you rarely will see a one f-stop because that would be the identical size. So starting at two, you go to 2.8 and then you would go to four and then 5.6 and then eight and then 11. Um, those are the, the sort of standard whole f-stop numbers. The numbers that are in between that, like 4.8, that would be one, two, 4.8, and then the next one might be 5.6. Um, that though that represents a, a frac a fraction. 4.8 might have been the widest that you were able to do, and I understand why you would have chosen that there then. And then logically you did do it correctly in that you went one, two, three to 5.6 uh, or 3.6.3. Uh, so that makes sense that you would have wound up there. Um, so, uh, but the, the, just so that you'll know that that what those aren't the representing the uh, the whole generated the whole f stop. So it would have been better if you had in fact started at five point six, uh, just for the projects project wise. All right. So exposures um, again, we're looking then for you to be able to navigate both of them now um, to be able to work in the the manual mode and be able to now understand the the synchronicity between shutter and aperture, the, the balance between the two, be, being able to alter one and be able to correct with the other, and how the, those combinations kind of work together, which is now the the full control of of the aesthetics of these two these two things and how those will work together um, to benefit um, your your imagery and and really making sure that you're able to do that and not let the exposure get out get away from you um, and you've you've done it fairly well here um, and, and again the the the, the digital um, tool is a, a great value to us because we'll know if we got it wrong immediately because we'll see a you know completely bright image or a dark image if we've uh, navigated it wrong. Um, you know the 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 detail to which you're working is really um, quite beautiful. What you're doing um, with it, we have um, you know a few things you probably can't even see within your your frame. These things would easily be uh, corrected in um in photoshop things like this right here hopefully yeah you should be able to see this with my cursor i'm kind of circling it right here um that little like notch there where you wouldn't necessarily want that to be in the composition um only because it kind of creates this point of tension you might not have even seen that in your frame in your viewfinder because viewfinders very rarely show you the entire uh the entire frame that you're capturing um only the you know very high end cameras do. Um, they they show wider and wider um, frames, and so. But anyway, that that's just a, a an observation um, on that. All right, going to the you know better. This is okay, this is just where we want to 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 see you playing around um, to see what kind of um, aesthetic images you can come up with. Um, when given just basically, all right, you've got all these tools. Let's see what is interesting to you. Um, shadow, shape, movement, um, color, tone, all of those things play a part in what you're doing. Um, hopefully you're starting to gather some meaning um, to all of these things and being able to connect what you're seeing to some kind of aesthetic. Clearly, I'm showing you um, tools. I'm showing you, you know, methodologies that can um, that can help you. But I'm not, you know, I'm not hoping that you do any one or or another aesthetic. Uh, I'm hoping that you find um, ways to incorporate what we're studying into whatever it is that you're searching for um, visually. And um, clearly, you're looking for some kind of. Um, otherworldly environment of some sort, or at least that's what you're finding, whether you're looking for it or, or not. Um, now, where you go from there, 
um, is really up to you. I mean, you want to, to kind of think about what it is that you want to communicate. Um, what are the, the, the ideas behind um, some of these things that you might be able to bring forward um, as you continue with your photography. Um, but these are beautiful images. Um, some of them get a little bit dull. I mean, this one is a little bit flat in terms of tonality, but that's okay um, that it is a little bit flat because in, in the digital sort of realm, we do move these into Photoshop and do a little bit of, uh, of tonal correction to bring them up. This one's, uh, you know, almost perfectly exposed. I say almost, the, the, we could use a little bit of tone here, but not much at all. Um, you're leaving yourself some, some good room here for, um, uh, for further uh, manipulation and, and correction in, um, in Photoshop. All right, well, let's take a look at your, um, your sunlight images here, sunlight as a key. This is just a transition and we're transitionary um, experiment where we're um, really just, we're moving into a new environment uh, and challenging you to uh, sort of apply the tools that we're using in a very controlled environment into a, a space that you don't have that control of, um, bringing elements out there, maybe communicating um, there and uh, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, you're in these images anyway. You've denied the 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 landscape altogether, and and really just use the light itself uh, in the same way you would in the studio. It's it's very interesting the way you've sort of just like you know okay, forget about the idea that it's a. Um, you know, outside. Uh, I'm going to use the fact that it's outside just for the light itself. And I don't know that I've witnessed any of the other um, uh, students doing that at all. So it's very interesting that you chose to do that, um, to just use the light rather than to make images of the landscape or make images that incorporated things that are out there um, that you wanted to to maintain control of that subject and the shapes and all of those kinds of things. Uh, this is quite beautiful, your choice to go with a shallow depth of field uh, to allow this page to really sort of um, soften its edge there. Uh, the letters, the words don't really um, take the forefront, which is a tricky thing to do with text. Um, you do have quite a, a striking um, angle here that I'm not sure you you were going for such a dramatic angle. This diagonal, when you get to the the corners, um, is often not necessary to have that sharp of an angle. Um, oftentimes, if what we do is we go and soften that angle just a little bit, sort of pacify it like this, um, we still get the same energy, but. It, it as you kind of move from here over to the other edge to here, it doesn't quite challenge the viewer visually as much. Um, the corners of a composition, a blank composition, um, are the most dynamic or interesting parts of it to begin with. And we usually don't have to do a whole lot to them then. We're usually using those as more like areas to bring the, the composition back to the center. It, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a navigation tool kind of thing. And so to have elements pointing to those corners usually aren't necessary for us to do. So if I were to suggest anything, it would be to take that, you know, when you see angles like that happening, kind of pacify them a little bit, turn the the the, the lens a little bit this way so that you can lean that that uh, angle a little bit more flat. Uh, you'll get the same visual uh, effect, but not quite as aggressive. Um, on it. These are, are you know, using a, 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 a different atmosphere. You've clearly, you've shifted your, your color balance there. You've maintained this little bit of a, of a tonal haze. I think we need a little bit of, 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 of control here in Photoshop. This one probably does the best to kind of get that kind of glow maybe that you were looking for from the, the, the backlit here where you're still holding on to the, the, the tone. Um, this one does a little bit too. You're getting a little, keeping the luminosity. This one clearly kind of maybe got away from you. It, it, it got a little flat. Um, and I think you know that already. Um, I, I'm pointing it out only to, to 
you know, con had the conversation about um, saying, yes, I agree with you. Um, but um, yeah, these are, are quite interesting. And here's a good example of that diagonal still giving you that energy. See how this isn't coming out of the corner. This is coming from the side and how it's allowing the, the image to have a lot more movement and a lot more of a of a rhythm, then if that was coming straight off of this corner, it would be denying a lot more of that um, that movement uh, on it. So that that's a that's a good example of what I was talking about in the earlier uh, photograph. Um, uh, the same thing with here, you are getting things that are coming out of here, um, but it's not necessarily coming directly out. I might have uh, chosen to, to move this out a little bit more, have a little bit more information so it wasn't so crammed up against the corner here, but um, that's just a, a, another fine, you know, sort of fine tuning point that, that could be done um, on it. So yeah, these are these are really interesting um, sort of experiments that I think, you know, at this point, really, um, you know, that 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 you would take these as sort of the base image and and then further uh, address them in like Photoshop and try to bring bring them out um, to just like tweak them here or there, which is exactly what you want to be doing in Photoshop. It's not a tool to be used to completely save bad images all the time. I mean, you can, but it's not, you, you don't want to do that by design, um, you, not as a photographer anyway. Um, you can help other people uh, fix their images, but you, it's it's not something where you want to get into the habit of, of thinking, well, I'll just correct that. Uh, I'll just make the picture real quick and um, on purpose decide that Photoshop will, will save the day. Um, but for your images, you've gotten uh, a, a really good capture. You've got the, the sort of um, foundation of all of the light dynamics going on. And so when you bring that into an editing um, software like Photoshop, your real work is sort of the polished part of it, not the, let me kind of save something that isn't working already. So anyway, that's what we have for you. Um, I look forward to more images uh, and we'll see you in the studio. All right, bye now.